Welcome to This Day in Radio History, where we play an episode from the golden age of radio that was broadcast originally on today's date. Be sure to like and subscribe below and click that notification bell to receive notifications when we load up weekday videos. Superman Airplane Disasters at Brigger Field Part 3 originally aired on May 3rd, 1940. Superman first appeared in Action Comics in 1938 and the following year the newspaper comic strip began four audition radio programs which were prepared to sell Superman as a radio series. When Superman was first heard on radio less than two years after the comic book appearance, the character took on an added dimension with Bud Collier in the title role. The radio serial engaged young after-school audiences with its distinctive opening, which changed slightly as the series progressed. If you would like to purchase a preloaded MP3 player with Superman episodes, or perhaps other radio shows that originally aired on your birth date, an anniversary, or any special customized date, we have many thousands of programs to choose from. Just click on the link below in the description or visit us online at radiolongago.com. This episode originally aired on this date, May 3rd, 1940. Today in Radio History presents episode number 36 of Superman. Airplane Disasters at Burger Field, Part 3. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman. Valiant fighter for truth and justice. Champion of the weak and the helpless. Who has appeared on Earth with a physical structure never before attained by mortal man. Superman, who is stronger than a locomotive. Faster than a speeding bullet. And who walks about among human beings as Miles Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. When we last saw him, Superman, in his character of Clark Kent, was on his way to Bridger Field, a private airport in the southwest, to investigate a series of mysterious plane crashes. Unknown to Kent, the man responsible for the disasters is Professor Hagen, who travels with a wandering circus while working out strange and sinister inventions. Aware of Kent's coming, Hagen had his plane wrecked, and when Kent and Jimmy Olsen and Ed Hamlin, their pilot, were rescued from the desert by a passing train with part of the circus aboard, he arranged to have Kent and Jimmy attacked by the giant gorilla on the train. As our story continues today, some time has passed, and Kent and Jimmy have reached Bridger Field. Hamlin has recovered rapidly from his bullet wound, which turned out not to have been serious. And he and Kent are beginning their investigation. Listen. Here's my office, Kent. Close the door and pull up a chair. Where's young Jimmy? I, I believe he went into Del Rio with one of your men. Jimmy's still young enough to be attracted by a circus. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand how you and Jim, Jimmy finally got here. I thought I told you. Jimmy got left on that siding, and I hopped off the train and went back to find him. And we just waited till the next freight came along and rode in on that. But about that gorilla... Well, you're lucky you're still alive to tell about it, Kent. Don't I know it. But that wasn't any accident, Hamlin. What? I say that wasn't any accident. That cage door was left unlatched, and whoever did it meant to do it. Good heavens, Kent. Why? Well, that's what I'd like to know myself. And also, why was our plane attacked in the air? Why did they come after us with machine guns? No, it's mad. Perfectly mad. I've had traces out all over the country. That attacking ship has simply vanished. And yet we know it crashed. You said that, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, it crashed, all right. But I'm not surprised it vanished. You're not? Hamlin, any power that could bring down six planes during their test flight right over this airport... Wouldn't have much trouble in disposing of a single plane out in the desert. Can't think what you're saying. I know what I'm saying, Hamlin. I'm absolutely convinced that the cause of the wrecks at Bridger Field is deliberate and human. Someone, for some reason which we don't understand and by some means we don't know, is slaughtering your flyer. Oh, but Kent, that's incredible. It's, it's not human. Do you call it human to release a gorilla on a man and a helpless boy? How are they doing it? I said I didn't know. But if we try, maybe we can find out. I beg pardon, sir. Yes? Radiogram just came in. Mark Turgeon. All right, Bailey. You needn't wait. Excuse me, will you, Kent, please? Yes, certainly. Yeah. This is news. Am I allowed to ask? Mm. We're being investigated now, all right. <laughs> There's trouble ahead, Kent. What do you mean? Well, this says arriving Bridger, 1230, and it's signed Fuller. 
How? Who's Fuller? Oh, just the president of the National Air Service, that's all. What? That Fuller? Yeah, the president of the Lions, Ken. He does things like this all the time. Flies his own plane wherever he goes. Supposed to keep us on our toes and have the big boss drop in by himself and unannounced. Matter of fact, that is... Oh, wait a moment, what's the time now? Quarter past twelve. Hmm, it's about fifteen minutes more time than he usually gives us. What's that? Your clock's out of whack. No, 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 that's the automatic radio warning. Weather report coming out of Del Rio. Oh. Uh, switch it on, will you? Sure. Don't you get weather reports from the government? Go oh, ahead, yeah, sure. We just use this as a check. Funny how often they don't check. <laughs> Wait till it warms up, Norman. All right, here it comes. Thanks to Cali Broadcasting Station, Del Rio weather forecast for northern Sonora and Chihuahua. Important. Storm coming. Plane will meet arriving scale in next or possibly few hours or minutes. They should use precautions for all our gale force. I will repeat. Oh, shut it off, shut it off. He's out of his mind. (laughs) That's the dizziest line of talk I ever heard. Well, to be fair to the fellow, you see, he's a Mexican translating into English as he goes along. But even then, there aren't any gales coming. Is he always that far off base? Oh, no, no. (laughs) Only on his really important stuff. Mm -hmm. When he says important, you can almost bet he'll be wrong. (laughs) Well, now, getting back to the trouble. Yes, there are several (laughs) mighty interesting points, Hamlin. For one thing, what happened to the motors? Mm. You remember you told me in the plane just before you got hurt that in every single one of the wrecks when you got to them, you found the motors missing? Mm, that's right. They simply vanished. Uh, how do you explain it? Can't I? Can't explain it. It's fantastic. Not possible. I beg pardon, sir. Yes, what is it, Bailey? It looks like a dust storm coming up, sir. Dust storm? Where's it coming from? Over in the northeast, sir. Hey, that's sort of bad, isn't it, Hamlin? What about Mr. Fuller? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. He has luck he'll get here just about the same time the storm does. And that'll be our fall, too. Go on out to the field, Bailey. I'll be right out. We're expecting a plane. Very good, sir. Come along, Kent. There's really a dust storm coming. It's something to watch. All right. What are they doing with those planes? Getting them under cover. Hey, wait a minute. That does look like a storm at that coming right down the valley. (laughs) Hamlin, I think you did that Mexican announcer an injustice. Nonsense. He said gales, not dust storms. Well, maybe in Mexican they're the same thing. Hey, that seems pretty terrifying. Is it as bad as it looks? Well, it gets good and dark, and then everything is inches deep in dust. Uh-huh. Thank heavens we don't get many of them, though. What I'm really worried about is Fuller. He'll turn back when he sees it, won't he? Him turn back? <laughs> you don't know him. But how can he see the lamb? He can't, unless he gets here first. And if he doesn't, well, we'll order out the ambulance. Things begin to look not so good, Kent. When did he say he'd get here? 12.30, wasn't it? Must be pretty near that right now. Is he prompt? On the nose. Maybe sooner. Because if he's coming from the west, he's got a following wind. What do you mean? The wind's with the storm, isn't it? No, no. Only near the ground. I haven't time to explain it all now. Mr. Hamlin? Yes? There it is. Wind coming in from the west. Mm. Where? I don't see it. Yeah, there it is. It's just a speck. It's growing all the time. Well, the fool, he can see what's happening. Why doesn't he turn back? Hey, if he doesn't work fast, he'll meet the dust head on. Coming down the valley hard, Hamlin. Say, there's some in the air already. Kent, you'd better get inside. Get on the shelter. When it hits, it's bad. I may do that. It gets into your throat and your eyes. Wait a minute. Where is he now? Coming fast, sir. I don't think he'll make it. The dust will get here before he can get down. Bailey, warn the ambulance crew. Tell him to stand by for a crash. Hamlin, he's lower. He's going to try to make it. Oh, touch and go. No, oh, we ought to go back. Look, he's down to a thousand feet, and here comes the dust. Kent, Kent, you get back. Get inside the house. Okay, Hamlin. This isn't my job. I'll see you later. What's going on up there? What's happening? Mr. Hamlin, sir. He's trying to bank. He's going back. No, oh, he'll never make it. Now he hasn't a chance. Bailey, look. Mr. Hamlin. What the... He's in flames. He's burst into flames. No, it's just like all the others. He's on fire and he's going to crash. Emergency. Quick, quick, run for it. Not much time for this. Thank heavens for the dust storm. At least they think Clark Kent's still back in the house. Now for that flame. Up, up. Faster. Fire. Getting there. Oh, he's a fire. Blazing. I was afraid of that. I thought they'd do it, whoever they are. Quick, quick. Got to catch that flame before it crashes. Yeah, here we are. Oh, what heat. Now then, right through the cabin. Fuller. Mr. Fuller. Oh, help. Help. I can't see. Who's that? Uh... Oh, he's out. Unconscious. Great heavens, it's like a furnace. Motor's on fire. Quick, over my shoulder. We're almost on the ground. It's going to crash any second. Out. Out and away. Mr. Fuller, you're sure you'll feel all right now? Yeah, certainly. 
Brevity, all right. That was a nasty crash, Mr. Fuller. I don't think I know this gentleman, Hammond. I oh, beg your pardon, sir. He's the fellow that pulled you out of the wreckage. We didn't even know he was there. Well, that wasn't anything. If he hadn't got you when he did, well... Oh, sir, I'm obliged to you. He's Mr. Kent, sir. Clark Kent. Mr. Kent, all I can say is thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now then, Hammond, I'm here for two reasons. First, to find out what's been going on. We'd like to know that ourselves, sir. Oh, disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. What's it all about, eh? Mr. Fuller, sir, we don't know. We haven't any idea. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have warned you off. Warned me off, eh? Warned me off? Well, well, sir, you saw what happened, even to you. Precisely, and I shall stay here till the whole thing is solved. But that's not the most important thing, Hamlin. No, sir? Hamlin, this is Tuesday. Quite so. On Thursday evening, just 48 hours from now, or slightly more, this field will entertain a most distinguished visitor. What? Distinguished visitor? Coming here? Here and nowhere else. At the moment, I can't tell you who or what this visitor is. But if anything should happen here at the field... But, Mr. Fuller, sir, really, he shouldn't come. Shouldn't come. No, under the circumstances, I, I can't be responsible. Why must he come to Bridger? He's coming to Bridger for good and sufficient reasons. I can't tell you any more than that, except that you will be responsible. Well, Mr. Fuller, if you'll allow me a word, I think Mr. Hamlin is right. Unfortunately, sir, this is a decision for ourselves. Not that I mean to be rude, you understand, Hamlin. You have 48 hours to make Bridger feel secure and prepare for our guests. That's all. A big pardon, sir. No, 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 not now, Bailey. Mr. Kent, sir. Uh, yes? It's the boy, sir, young Jimmy Olsen. Well, what? Is, is he hurt? Has anything happened? No, sir, but he's back from Del Rio. Back from the circus, Mr. Kent. And he says he's got to see you right away. He says it's important for you to come whatever you're doing. He says he's got to see you. Events come marching thick and fast at the lonely airport of Bridger Field. Can Superman solve the mystery in 48 hours' time? Can he prevent accident to the distinguished visitor arriving on a mysterious errand? And what has young Jimmy Olsen discovered at the Lobeck Tent Show, where Professor Hagen works out his sinister plan? Tune in and follow the next exciting chapter of Superman. And remember, be sure to tune in the next thrilling installment of the amazing transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Radio.